Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Is OpenAI about to ship artificial general intelligence? The conversation that we're having today got started on Friday afternoon, when Sam Altman announced that OpenAI's O3 reasoning model is close to release. He posted, Thank you to the external safety researchers who tested O3 Mini. We have now finalized a version and are beginning the release process, planning to ship in a couple of weeks. Also, we heard the feedback. We'll launch API and ChatGPT at the same time. It's very good. The hype cycle began immediately. Santi Genischatz writes, O3 is coming. Brace for the AGI. In fact, there was so much of this type of discussion that Altman dove in, participating in a long discussion in the replies to level set expectations. After McKay Wrigley asked, are you able to speak of how capable O3 Mini is compared to O1 Pro? Altman said, worse than O1 Pro at most things, but fast. When Terrace Bob wrote, sad, I want a model even smarter than O1 Pro, willing to pay. Altman said, O3 is much smarter. We're turning our attention to that now. And O3 Pro, mind blown emoji. In terms of who has access to this, the new model will be available to at least OpenAI Pro subscribers. In other words, the folks who are paying $200 per month. Overall, after the weekend, Sam Altman came back to Twitter to say, Twitter hype is out of control again. We are not going to deploy AGI next month, nor have we built it. We have some very cool stuff for you, but please chill and cut your expectations 100x. Now, of course, when OpenAI first previewed O3 at the end of December, to many it was the first model that looked a little bit like AGI. It was the first to score 75% on the ARC AGI benchmark, maybe the best yardstick we have right now for testing AGI-style performance. However, that testing was done on the full model and used an incredible amount of compute. ARC AGI tests allow for a budget of $10,000 for inference for official ranking. Unofficial OpenAI also completed a run using over 100,000 of inference and performed much higher. But that level of compute isn't feasible to deliver to the public, so we're getting something much smaller and consequently less powerful. Still, that doesn't mean this model won't be a paradigm shift in its own right. Chubby, for example, wrote, To explain again why O3 Mini is so important, we get a reasoning model that is better than full O1 and costs only a fraction of it. At medium compute, O3 Mini is still cheaper at least a tiny bit than O1 Mini, but outperforms full O1 and code forces by more than 100 ELO. That means better reasoning for more applications and more users. Wider application leads to more insights and more breakthroughs. That's why O3 Mini is so important. Henry Mao, the founder of Jenny AI, got specific. If O3 Mini is cheap enough, it might just supplant 4.0 and Sonnet 3.5 for daily coding tasks. Blake C., an app developer, wrote, O1 Pro will take five minutes sometimes when you ask it to say fix some code, but it's like 2 to 3x better than Sonnet most of the time. If O3 Mini is 2x Sonnet and the same speed, that will be nuts. TDM suggested that this isn't really about releasing a more performant model, but rather a step towards making OpenAI's reasoning models more cost-effective. They boasted, So O3 Mini is basically just faster O1. I think the primary reason they are releasing this is that the O1 cost can't be reduced enough to sustain scale while not losing money on it. Another would be for API devs to start using O3 Mini more instead of Sonnet since it would be faster and smarter. And so, taking cues from Sam Altman, this really doesn't sound like consumer-grade AGI. And yet, there are other hints that OpenAI is approaching some very big things. Axios reported over the weekend that Sam Altman has been invited to brief the Trump White House next week. The article stated that, quote, a top company, possibly OpenAI, in coming weeks will announce a next-level breakthrough that unleashes PhD-level super agents to do complex human tasks. OpenAI sources said that they are, quote, both jazzed and spooked by recent progress. Interestingly, there haven't really been any public rumblings about OpenAI launching agents, but it does seem to many that this is an area where the company has been lagging behind. And yet it seems like this might not be the case for long. Tibor Blaho, for example, found references to agents in OpenAI's code. He tweeted, Confirm the ChatGPT macOS desktop app has hidden options to define shortcuts for the desktop launcher to toggle operator and force quit operator. Operator is the name of OpenAI's forthcoming general purpose agent. The information previously reported that January was the intended launch month for operator. Chubby once again also noted that OpenAI already has a comparison page on their website showing operator's performance contrast against Anthropic's computer use mode and Google's Mariner agent. They wrote, looks like release is imminent. The benchmarks in this leaked graphic, which we don't know if it's real, show a substantial step up from Anthropic's model and a slight improvement from Google's dedicated web browsing agent in that domain. Still, it doesn't seem as though OpenAI have perfected computer use mode. For example, the leaked testing showed the agent could only successfully sign up for a cloud services account and launch a virtual machine 60% of the time. Responding to some of the hype, Kumar Aparanji, the head of automation at Cognizant, tried to tamp down expectations of what these agents can do. He posted, No, this is not going to get us ASI or AGI. These are agents, real-time, yes, and can be useful too, uniquely in narrow cases, expensively in others, but agents nevertheless, which means they call the models. The models need to provide the AGI and ASI, and they're not doing that anytime soon. Not even DeepSeek R1, although it is 27x cheaper than O1. 
Speaking of which, while these release rumors from OpenAI set imaginations racing, a rival Chinese lab sucked a lot of the oxygen out of the room with their latest model. Over the weekend, DeepSeek released their full version of the R1 reasoning model. Now, you might remember that we've talked about DeepSeek a number of times. Economist Tyler Cowen used it as his example of why Trump should think differently about Biden's chip export policies. And in terms of what was released, the model performs in line with O1 on most benchmarks, in particular Sweebench Verified, which focuses on programming tasks. R1 is now fully available as an open source model for commercial use and is capable of serving outputs via API at less than 5% of the cost of O1. Hobbyists are also able to run the model at home, with several demonstrating that it runs on a cluster of Mac minis. Accompanying the full release of R1 was a technical paper describing the post-training process, which develops reasoning capability on top of a foundation model. DeepSeek said they tried multiple forms of post-training before landing on a relatively simple reinforcement learning process. Max Winga, a research engineer at Conjecture AI, posted, It's wild to me that they did this with no fine-tuning prior to the RL stage. R1 learns to reason on its own like Alpha Zero. During training, they observe the model learning to use advanced reasoning techniques, an aha moment. We are playing with alien minds, not just tools. AI entrepreneur Elvis Arabia writes, The DeepSeek R1 paper is a gem. It's clear that LLM reasoning capabilities can be learned in different ways. Reinforcement learning, if applied correctly and at scale, can lead to some really powerful and interesting scaling and emergent properties. Now, all of this has some people thinking ahead to future possibilities. The AI for Success account, for example, tweets, In a few years, China will create AGI and open source it for all. DeepSeek R1 costs 96% less compared to OpenAI O1, and it's almost as good as O1. Intelligence too cheap to meter. 2025 is going to be crazy. I can feel it. Indeed, the rapid development going on in China has major implications for AI policy. In announcing the latest round of export controls, the Biden administration made it clear that international competitiveness was a key issue. The policy statement set an explicit goal to ensure that U.S. models are dominant across the world, especially in the Global South. Dean W. Ball, a research fellow at George Mason University, posted, Deep Seek R1 takeaways for policy. One, Chinese labs will likely continue to be fast followers in terms of reaching similar benchmark performance to U.S. models. Two, the impressive performance of DeepSeek's distilled models, smaller versions of R1, means that very capable reasoners will continue to proliferate widely and be runnable on local hardware, far from the eyes of any top-down control regime, including U.S. diffusion rule. Three, open models are going to have strategic value for the U.S., and we need to figure out ways to get more frontier open models out to the world. We rely exclusively on Meta for this right now, which, while great, is just one firm. Why do OpenAI and Anthropic not open source their older models? What would be the harm? Mostly where people's minds are is just feeling the acceleration. Perplexity CEO Aravan Srinivas writes, It's kind of wild to see reasoning get commoditized this fast. We should fully expect an O3-level model that's open source by the end of the year, probably even mid-year. So friends, lots going on as we dig deeper into January. That, however, is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.